Welcome to another training video by H Impact. This is Travis Elholt, Senior Software Engineer here at H Impact. This video will cover how to create a Blazor server-side project and begin the integration of Entity Framework Core for SQL Data Access. We'll also create a model class that uses Entity Framework Core. The data from the SQL database will be used later in this video series to build charts from the Chart.js JavaScript library. We are using Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2019 and Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio 2019 with a SQL Server Express installation. All software is free and is available on Microsoft's website for download. I have included the links in the description below. Also, if you missed the previous Blazor Chart JS video, which created our database for this project, I've left the link in the description, as well as the project source code. Let's get started. If you recall from our last video, we created our Chart Stats database. After adding some test records to the cities table, we wrote a SQL query to return our test records. Now that we have a database, let's create our Blazor server-side application. Let's open Visual Studio to create our Blazor server-side solution and project. From the Visual Studio 2019 dialog box, let's choose Create a new project. From the Create a new project dialog box, Let's choose Blazor app and click next. We need to name our project Blazor Chart JS. You can either accept the default location or add a custom folder. I'm going to choose H Impact as my custom location. I'm going to choose to leave the checkbox checked for Place, Solution, and Project in the same directory, and then click Create. When presented the option between Blazor Server Side App and Blazor WebAssembly App, Choose Blazor Server Side App. Make sure the Configure for HTTPS checkbox is checked and then click Create. Excellent. Looks like the project template was created successfully. Now, let's make sure this project runs successfully before we make changes. The project loaded successfully. We're currently on the home page, which has a Hello World greeting, as well as a banner. This is the default component named index.blazor. Let's click the counter link to display the counter component. Nice. The component displays successfully. And if we click the click me button, the component increments the current count without doing a page refresh. Finally, let's click the fetch data link. Perfect. This component displays a grid of weather forecasts with dates, Celsius, Fahrenheit, and a summary. Now, let's get back to the project to prepare it for SQL data access. In order to add a connection to the database, we'll first need to add a connection string. We'll add our connection string in the app settings.json file. This is where we'll add our connection string for our database. We'll begin by adding the label connection strings. Let's 
Then we need to add a specific label for our particular database. Our database is called chart stats. So to keep things simple, let's call our label chart stats. When our application references the connection string for our chart stats database, it will use this label chart stats. Now for the connection string, let's type server equals full host backslash backslash SQL express database equals chart stats trusted connection. End it with a semicolon. And that's all we need. Notice the local host server name is separated by two slashes between the server name and the SQL Server instance. The first slash escapes the second slash. Let's hit Control S to save this. And let's open the pages folder. Here we see the three components which we saw earlier the counter component, the fetch data component, and the index component. All components can act as a self contained component or their own pages. Now that we've added our connection string to our app settings.json file, we need to do a few more things to ensure we can access our data. So, first, we need to create a model. A model that represents one row in our city's table. First, we need to create the models folder. We need to add a folder called models to our project. We need to name it models. Now that we have the models folder, let's add our new class. Let's name it city. And click add. Perfect. Okay. Now we have our city created inside of our models folder. And just looking at the city class, we notice that the class has been placed inside of our blazor chart js dot models namespace. Blazor chart js is the project name and models is the folder name. Our class is defined as city. Again, this needs to represent one row in our table. So we need a property that identifies each column from our table. To match back to the city ID primary key, we need a property by the name of city ID. Prop tab tab gives us a template for the property we need to add. City ID is going to be the name. Our next field is city name. Although we could keep the integer for the city ID, we need to change the data type for the city name. It needs to be string. And the name needs to be city underscore name. Next up, population. This is another energy field, so we'll accept the default for the property. And just change the name to population.
Now we need to add our first color. It's going to be a string. And the property name is going to be hex underscore color. Finally, we need to add the last property, which is RGBA color. And the data type is going to be string. And it's going to be RGBA underscore color. It's looking good. We've done a great job on matching our properties to our field names. Now we need to make sure the city ID will be identified as a primary key. In order to do that, we need to add an attribute above city ID. That attribute is named key. At the moment, it's not being recognized. Therefore, we must be missing either a directive or an assembly reference. We're actually missing a NuGet package for Entity Framework Core. In order to access the NuGet Package Manager, we just need to go over here to the project, right click the project, scroll down till we find Manage NuGet Packages, in this window, we can browse for NuGet packages, identify those that are installed, and even see updates. So we need to choose Browse and then type Entity Framework Core. We have plenty to choose from. I know we're going to need Entity Framework Core, so we'll pick this one. And click install. Accept. Okay, good. This key attribute, as well as this one, it looks like that's referencing the city.cs attribute we were adding. Before we go back to resolve this problem, Let's add a couple of more of these Entity Framework Core packages. I happen to know that we need to add the Entity Framework Core dot relational as well. So let's add that and click install. Click I accept. And finally, we need to be specific to SQL Server. So we can scroll through here and look for it, or we can type SQL Server up here. Let's just type SQL up here. Okay, great. This is the one we need Microsoft Entity Framework Core dot SQL Server. Over here. Click install. For the license acceptance, click I accept. Okay, now let's get back to our error. There's still an issue with our city.cs class. So let's go back to our city.cs class and see what the problem is. Okay. The key attribute still has a red squiggly. At this point, we're just missing some using statements. So let's just add them up top. We can do it by using this light bulb and picking the option or typing them. Let's use this light bulb for now. Here's data annotations. And notice that the key attribute no longer has the red squiggly. I'll move this down here to the bottom. But there's still one more problem. In order for Entity Framework 
to understand what's represented by the cities table in the database. Our class is called city in this application. So we need to define what the city represents in the database. In order to do that, we have to add another attribute. This attribute is called table. It needs a parameter called cities because that is the name of our table in our database. And it looks like this attribute is not being recognized as well. So let's click the light bulb and see what it gives us for suggestions. The first one is the one we need. System.ComponentModel.DataAnnotations.Schema Excellent. Now, our city ID is now identified as the primary key, and our city class now matches back to the table name of cities. Okay, that about wraps it up. But let's do one more thing. Just in case we need it later, let's add a using statement for the Microsoft.EntityFramework core namespace. To do that, we can just type it in right here. Okay, great. There we go. Our city class has been completed. Now, let's save all our changes. And let's run the project to make sure we don't have any errors. And our project loaded successfully. We're back on the home page. We're able to click through each link. And everything seems to work just fine. Excellent. That's all of it. If you have any questions on creating a Blazor server side project and installing Entity Framework Core, leave a comment below and I'll do my best on getting back to you. In the next video, we will cover how to register our DB context and data service as a part of our Blazor Apps startup.cs file. Because this enables dependency injection, it will allow us to use our service to access the data for our Chart.js charts and throughout the entire Blazor server side application. In the meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up with a like and share this video. Comments with or without a question are great too. Again, this is Travis L. Hope. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this training video from himpact.com.